Hello everyone, welcome to the finals of the Pokemon trading card game, Euro Euro <laughs> European <laughs> Stuttgart Regional Championships. I'm Nicholas Pierce, I'm here with Connor Hayward. Oh, th this, is th this is what we've been waiting for all weekend, we've mm. all had to kind of learn about Expanded and quickly pick up the, uh, how this uh, game works, because a lot of us were unfamiliar, but now the two players who have tested the most have found that basically the same list um, <laughs> have gone all the way to the final um, where we'll see uh, Pedro Torres versus uh, Miroslav uh, Polski um, in basically a Zoroark eggs mirror match more or less we're going to see yeah, here. So we know what deck is going to win or what archetype is going to win this tournament but now it's not about the archetype it's about the players so these, both of these guys are ready to go they're already set up but you can see their prices are already and, and there's the handshake. They're very ready to go look at that. And, oh! And, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and Pedro's like Snap! <laughs> yep. We can both start eggs, boy. <laughs> yep. Uh, there's a. Dude, oh, actually, just looking at the prizes, I mentioned already there, two Zoras on Zor on the Well, team. and also the other Lele, which means that Miro, as he goes through here now, is going to very quickly realize that his first Bridget targets are fine. Yeah. The two Z uh, Zorua and the Sudabudo. However, from then on, if these Zoros go down too quickly, he hasn't got many options. No, no, he, he, um, not necessarily. He does say free tap to Lele, at least, so there's, uh, you know, he has access to one more throughout the game before, because granted, granted Lele is probably won't fish out of his prizes, so that's okay. But, I guess, but uh, again, look where those Zoruas are. Those yeah. would be in the kind of second set of prize cards. These would be the kind of, toward the end of the game, 4-5, uh, if they take them in the order we expect them to, which means that he's gonna have no Zeruas at some point very soon. Yeah, yeah that's not great. Uh, he has got Sudo Widow out already, so that's great to go over him, and the fact that he's going first, of course, will give him a big advantage regardless. Well, we've seen this already uh, throughout the tournament, that the player who goes first in the Zoroark Mirror has access to the Hex Maniac and the kind of explosive turns where you trade a whole bunch of cards the turn before your opponent does, and by combining your Hex Maniac, you know, by getting Goat to go first and Hex Maniac, your opponent will never get that opportunity to have those explosive turns. No, no, he won't. And so, with that, it, it doesn't seem that there'll be much more that uh, Miloslav does this turn. I mean, the Bridget means that Pedro isn't hex, so he will be able to set up a fine uh, by Zomero as well. And in fact, what he could do is play a bunch of sets of Pokemon. Uh, and then uh, afterwards, maybe. Oh, no, sorry, I got to make oh, I got to make something around. I was going to say he, he, he could play about a set of Pokemon and then discard them. Um, he could maybe do that if uh, he manages to play his end on his own hex, because uh, then the pseudo would be shot off, and then he could discard back down again. But actually, so something that we'll see here is Pedro will probably go for a very similar opening than he did in the last couple of games, and Tord did. Where yes, okay, the Bridget is normally your optimal line, the kind of the obvious play, but. It might be a case that he prefers to go for the Ultra Ball, for Shaman, to set up and draw a load of cards, because you don't necessarily know what the situation is uh, to go for the Bridget. No, no, absolutely not. Um, He's really agonising that, that, like, what to go for off this Ultra Ball. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's got to be with this happen lately, right, surely? Or, or I guess... Yeah, it, it does. Like you said, it does depend on whether he, he would favour a more aggressive start or whether realising that... I guess going second also makes factors of decision because you're already on the back foot, so maybe a more aggressive start can help you sort of make up for that, and that might be something that leans in the other way. Yes, yeah, so I think both of these players are at full but these are, the executes in the active. That's really not where they're supposed to be no. at any point in this game, and they know that they're basically a free prize card um, to whoever can get there first. Yeah, and that can cause issues for both of them because that single prize card can be a big factor if they can find a way of n. Uh, or um, kind of things later in the game it means that you have to take basically the seventh prize more often than not so Petro has actually opted to go for Bridget here so mirroring Milosav's start not, not trying not going a more aggressive route I think he just wants to get that Sudoruda out as soon as possible uh, as well as obviously his uh, start putting out his Zoroas but if, if you just don't have that out it, it, it's sort of the, the equaliser in, in that sort of sense it's, oh actually having just, having just said that I, so I think what his options are here is he knows that with two executes in, in play, Miro is actually kind of limited in his bench space already. He has two dead uh, bench spots until and the, until Miro finds the Skyfield, which Pedro actually wants him to do at some point because he will use the same Skyfield. He actually doesn't need to rush for the Sudorudo. No, and, and equally, if he was put out Sudorudo now, he'd just discard an execute probably. So. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, well, maybe we save this for later in the game that where we can maybe Sudorudo, so he discards the eggs, then hex, because then he can't get them back as easily so you kind of find a combination for later in the game and just to give him access to a load of trades as soon as possible yeah uh, 
And uh, Pedro kind of shaking his head a little bit. I think he's, uh, he has to do one puzzle at a time. Uh, that's not great. Um, so obviously, most people would prefer using a double uh, puzzle at a time as a double. Yeah. So you can get cards back out of your discard pile. But it's just occasionally, it's just not enough. No. And he's got a red <laughs> card too. He looked pretty happy about that. Though. <laughs> he was like, uh, red card. Yeah. Um, so I, I think he's just like, yeah, this card is this card is silly in this format, right? Like. Do all of these things and disrupt your opponent's hand. Let's go. It, 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 it is funny how, again, that's one one of these cards that seems to have sort of crept back up after some expanded decks played it on occasion. We saw the play doesn't want off, but now it just seems like it's almost a staple in Zoroark eggs and uh, the devastating effect as we've seen so many times over the course of the past few days. Yeah, well, it's especially in the mirror match where the people get to like fifteen card hands pretty normally. Yeah, <laughs> to be able to go no, put those back, and you can't draw any more cards next turn. Quite a good idea. Yeah, yeah, no, it definitely is. Uh, so, looking at the two lists, um, the big, the biggest difference, as far as I'm concerned, is the difference um, in uh, Pedro. We've seen has played the Seismitoad in his list, uh, but actually Miro plays a, a one-off exec uh, executor, um, which we know is at least partly here for Mill uh, with the blockade ability. Lets people uh, take uh, no supporter for next turn, which is very helpful against the likes of Waylord. But actually, also can be very effective in the mirror. I think we saw that in round one by just saying, "Right, yes, you were chaining hex, but now I'm saying you can't, and I will." And that puts the person who gets to do that in control of the entire game. Yeah, you have to save it for the right point where it won't just you, your executor just won't get KO'd by a Zorark. But if you do do that, as you saw, then it can lock out the game because normally you do need that, you know, Guzma or Hex to lock out the last two turns of the game, and the blockade prevents the opponent from doing that. Well, also, I think it hits a uh, 10 damage, I believe, with Blockade, which isn't entirely insignificant. As we saw in a few games, it, like you can be just shy of KOs in places, and sometimes, like, 10 plus Choice Band. It's 40, yeah. That's, that's all, that, that might just be enough. So, Miller's Lab's hand does not look that great. Even after doing that trade, I don't think I see a single draw supporter in his hand. No. There's... It's been quite a slow start for both players in the sense. I mean, they've both got Bridget, but, you know, it's not. It looks more like standard than expanded, I think, is yes. the, the best way. Were it not for the execute, you'd be forgiven for thinking that. And the Mira playing the uh, expanded uh, Zerua, but yeah. uh, Pedro obviously um, has told us that he just didn't want to buy those. So <laughs> he says, ah, I'll deal with Ram. Uh, <laughs> 20 damage is fine. Yeah. And, I mean, if, if, if he. Uh, if he wins the this finals now, he will have, it will have proven that it doesn't matter. Yeah, it basically shows, hey, look, you don't really have to worry about being the optimal Zerua. You just have to be a Zerua so I can have a Zoro at <laughs> So, big chorus early on for a n whole nine cards. Very good. Uh, chorus very quickly lets you get a, a very large hand. Yeah, I mean, despite both players are playing three copies of it. Oh, no, actually, uh, I was wrong. Uh, Pedro's only playing two. But okay. still, multi both players play multiple yeah, copies of Chorus. It has such an obvious synergy with Zorok where you want to fill up your bench. Okay, more often than not, you want to Hex Maniac at the same time, but if your opponent has filled up their bench and you can't Hex, you Chorus. Yeah. You get a whole bunch of resources. Yeah. There's an Archibald's guarding a Skyfield and a Gessis. So this will mean Pedro's able to get another Zorok out, and now he's going to start to be able to really accelerate and get lots and lots of trades down. Now, the one thing Pedro has to be careful of is because his bench is already full there's no way for him to put down his own Sudowoodo because he's already got four down on the bench. So he will need to find a hex of his own, play it, and then put the Sudowoodo down if he wants to limit Milislav's options at any point. So <laughs> he's like, oh, I'll trade the choice. No, maybe I don't trade. Tra tra uh, yeah, 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 he will. Always a case of sometimes it's worth double checking to make sure choice band very important in this matchup. You can't one shot without it. Absolutely not. Um, without having to you know do things like sky return or set up numbers. And then it's not a one shot. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a two shot. But you did save a shaman, so maybe yeah. it's fine. Yeah. Uh, there is. Now he's, he looks like he's debating for the second uh, trade. He's debating on a rescue stretcher discard. Oh, no, it's, oh yeah, Tapu Lele makes more sense arguably because uh, there's no room to put it down. Draws into a Pokemon communication and a Pokemon Ranger. Now, this is one card that we've just come up in the discussion a couple of times in the previous yeah. games. It's, a, I think, a really nice card to see in this. It, basically, only really this deck benefits because it's like, right, I can get, take an egg from my discard, put it back, get the card I wanted, which is a play I've seen many times on stream. But also, because you need particular cards in particular turns, like a whole bunch of Zoroarks on your second turn, anything that isn't that, you just go, well, swap it out. Yeah. 
exactly. Works out, works out quite nicely. Um, and he's oh, he's got three Zoraks out now. And there goes the Pokemon Ranger being discarded. So lots of trades happening for Pedro. Still no Hex Maniac though. Not that he'd, not that he'd be able to play it this turn, but for next turn even. He does ha have uh, one of the double colorless cards in his hand, so he has the option to retreat. Um, is it worth spending double colors to retreat and execute though? That is the question. No, almost certainly not. Um, he's probably hoping. To, I think he only plays the one Float Stone, um, so hoping to try and draw into uh, that uh, off these trades. So he has an option to attack, but instead he's just going to go right. There are now two Zoroks that are ready to go. Yeah. And yeah, because the, the, the big risk with uh, Pedro is if you put the <laughs> Zorok out, because Murdersal's bench is not limited, all it takes is a Skyfield um, free Pokemon and a Choice Band, and uh, Zorok's getting one shots yep. in return, and that's not a good place to be in. There's a trade, just the one from Murdersal, seeing as in he has the one Zorok, discarding a Guzma. But that I, doesn't look like the face of a man who likes what he drew. No, uh, and actually, it's actually a really awkward situation because with only the one Zoroark in play for Miro versus the three for Pedro, he has so like he has his like deck is so much more limited in terms of how explosive he can be. Yeah, definitely. But there is there's the Skyfield though. So now I mean, the Guzman and Discord pile of the Seeker could find Miloslav uh, the Guzman back and then. Um, could switch into the Zoroark and attack if he has the energy, but that's a lot of that's a lot of ifs in that sentence. Yeah, well, it's it's a big thing as well because you can see him here, like kind of mapping out his turn of like, well, this is what I want to discard now, but do we get full value if we do this? So opting to actually discard the uh, the executor and a puzzle. Uh, never really want to be in that position that you have to discard the puzzle, but sometimes when you just need to find something immediately got to take what you can do yeah there's only one rescue stretcher that Millersad plays as well I'm not sure if he's been through it already but if he has then that could be sad for him potentially yeah so it's a it's a it's a big card that he has that Pedro doesn't and considering Pedro has uh, you know he just said in the interview he chose Seismitoad and things because they're kind of better against the general format uh, not just for the mirror whereas the executor is much better designed for the mirror so it might be a case of is one person kind of Better equipped. Uh, see a high five at the set up for six. It's always nice. Is that is that is that allowed? I thought, I thought you only had to do it if it was a June for a stick ball. <laughs> Someone did it for an empty-handed chorus earlier on, so I think the rules have gone out the window. Oh uh, yeah, clearly. clearly. Um, so it's actually again, it's a, I keep saying it. Um, you know, players are enjoying this tournament. I think it's a nice change for them to be, get a chance to play expanded. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and especially given that as we've mentioned so many times already, this is the only expanded regionals during this tournament season in Europe. So this is the only chance people in Europe get to really bust out these cards, yeah. apart from like league cups and such. Yeah, no. So the fact that I I picked up four of these uh, ex executes uh, before the tournament because I was like, oh, there's a chance I'm going to be playing, and then they're still sat on my binder having never been played. <laughs> <laughs> Did, did you did you pick them up before the price spike though? Yes. Uh, uh, very nice. <laughs> uh, so we see a computer search. So Ooh. does have access now to um, here you can go get the float stone. He might also want to get more eggs into the discard though. So it, yeah, it, it, it's tricky. I think he's trying to just determine whether he actually has enough to. Oh, he actually discards two skyfields. That looks like off of the computer search, which is fine. Yeah, these are effectively free discards in the same way the executes are because yeah. that skyfield's really not going to go anywhere. No, and there's. Yeah, debate wants to go for. I'm very curious as to whether he actually has enough at this point to go for here. We need a Guzma, a double colorless, and two Pokemon. Yeah, so if he it is a lot. But he might. So what can do a lot? So <laughs> there's, there's one of the pieces. There's a double colorless. There is. Oh, the there's there's a Versus Seeker. So he has access to the Guzma. He must have the other two Pokemon then. Oh, he Ooh, can break, okay, right, so yeah, he got the shame in. So uh, yeah, yeah, he has to switch. To the, he has to switch uh, off the uh, thing yeah. first. There we go. Yeah, yeah. And then he sets up for five. That is. And there's a, there's a pretty good chance he hits it. Don't forget, um, comp compressor would be out here. He can just discard one of the executes. Yep. Um, this is actually where they're having the two Zerua prize is a big issue because yep. it's just less. Speak of the devil. <laughs> <laughs> it's just le less things for him to hit. Yeah, there it is. So compressor will actually get him what he needs because he can just, as Connor just said. Put some more executes in the discard pile, put very something else, use propagation, put it, get his hand, put it on the bench, bam, 210 damage. Yeah, it's, we've said it time and time again, the execute actually has a really nice synergy in, in this deck because it's extra Pokemon on the bench, it's free discards, it's just a really nice card for this deck to have. And, it, and it, it lets you play Executor, which is crazy in and of itself. Yeah, so 
having access to kind of a lot of things from just one Pokemon. Yeah, and not only that, but just there you see he was able to use the two executes he just searched for, use Propagation on both, and then Ultra Ball discard them both, again reducing discard costs. Just yeah, so it's just, just like, this is the thing, so all the players we've had on who've talked about Zoroark have said, you just get ridiculous turns where you just can keep doing cards. Yeah. You, know, you just keep going, oh, we'll play some more. Oh, I, no, I'm not finished yet. Hang on, there's some more cards I want to play. Do you know what, you know what this deck is? This deck is what Mega Ray wished it could be. <laughs> yeah, like, it really is. It, it, it's like, and it's hard to say that as someone who had a lot, who, who played Mega Ray a lot back when it was legal. But yeah, no, this, this, it's just, this is just <laughs> absurd. It's like, oh, I get to do all this absurd damage, and I get to draw a, a billion cards a turn. You know. Yeah. So <laughs> it's just a, a really strong uh, thing. The, the Tapu Lele here, I think he's just choosing the Hex, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, if it is just turn one, this could fill out that bonkers turn one end on a, on a hex slot and a bingo. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just a. Uh, you, you play your hex maniac at this point. Oh, he discards it, he has the VS Seeker in hand. Um, uh, and has obviously Guzma this turn, so it basically means that yeah. he, he has easier access to hex. Yeah, there's more of a, more of a, um, a preparation for later turns rather yeah. than actual usage. Well, so this is something that is different in deck building in general here is there's a whole bunch of one ofs or ones and two counts because. With Battle Compressor, you actually have, like, for your supporters, really easy access to those. You do. So, another Battle Compressor just thinning his deck out even more. Mm-hmm. Just getting rid of Field Blower and gets this, and uh, although it, it's too early to call it, you have to, from the current standpoint, you've got to favour Mil- Millislav's chances here. There's just, there's two Zoroarks out. Uh, he's going to take a KO here, and, uh, well, he won't be able to fish out Zoroas from the prices just yet, but uh, he... Ends up fishing out the Tapu Lele instead. So, since there was no hex played, Pedro does have full access to all three of his trade abilities. He does. Uh, oh, well, two actually, because one got knocked out. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, and he, and because it wasn't the egg, the egg's still on the board and not in the discard pile to make those things free. Yeah, that's uh, unfortunate for him. Oh, it's fine. He has a battle compressor. Okay, so now he can get the other ones in the. Just, yeah, I can get the other ones in the discard pile, but Pedro's going to be a bit careful here because he just needs to think about what the best way to actually approach this is he's already on the back foot and he knows that he, having lost the coin flip and being quite unlikely to be able to get a care this turn he would need a lot he need to have all the pokemon he needs and the choice ready to go and then hex and bench it all mm-hmm. and and go for it because that pseudo wudo is putting a world of hurt into into Pedro, pedro's plans for this turn yeah so i think it might be a case of he might consider where he consider going for the pseudo wudo early this might be the time he looks to go for it because he gets to clear a whole four Pokemon off of the bench and if he can find a way of like, combining this with a Hex in some way it means that he can't recover it which then means that actually Mero's board gets broken down rather massively. Yeah, and it looks like actually he's opted to compressor it away. Well, he accidentally put the compressor on his deck cards and then thought that this pile... Ah! <laughs> So I was wondering what happened there. Uh, well, you know, they have played an extra few games today, but uh, Pedro had literally just finished his top four uh, series against Tord. Uh, and... And actually, he's opted to discard the Sudo Udo off the I think he has a stretcher in hand. Ah, yes, he does, of course, you're right. So, so yeah, like I said, is this the turn he goes for it? Just play, playing the stretcher. A red card first. So if you can find red card Pseudo Hex, it's actually a pretty strong turn. It's... One of those turns where Zoroark has these things that everyone refers to as swing turns. Yeah. Constantly refers to them as those. But this is actually a good demonstration of if, okay, Mero's board is very strong, basically fully built, but it has access to enough cards, just enough cards at any one time to be able to go, right, let's just fix this, though. Yeah. Interestingly enough as well, I don't believe that... Uh, I think Petro might be missing an Execute because there's, uh, there's none in his prizes. There's one in the discard pile and one in the field. So there should be one left in his deck, but he opted not to discard it. That's a very interesting point. And he's also opted not to stretch her away the... Well, I've got another compressor now. We'll find out. Yeah, yeah there yeah, it, is. it is. So he just, let, he just decided to actually he, need to have some options in my discard pile in case I don't hit the, the other yeah. uh, battle compressor. So now he's going to be able to discard the sky field. Uh, can't quite make out what that bottom card is but then the middle one is, is uh, it was the, the ace of roller is it is, is one of a copy of ace of roller because right. in this kind of match it just doesn't matter you no. get one shot every turn no no it's uh, I mean, it, it can do but it, it's in this particular circumstance but perhaps but it's not, not hex no no no, no <laughs> so it's, it's not that's, that's very true 
So now with the double colours in hand and the stretcher in hand. But having to play the shaman means he can't pseudo. No. And you have to think if he's done that, he probably has access to a Hexmaniac already. So there's another trade. Ooh, that's a, that's a Versus Seeker. If he had, does he have Choice Band? I don't think he does. No, he's missing it. He's got two Versus Seekers, so he already planned around sort of your hexing and sort of putting out everything and getting the KO. But with no, with no Choice Band, he's going to be a little bit short, unfortunately. Yeah, so... It's still, you know, the, the speed at which the pe these players play at varies throughout a turn because there are certain things where, right, this is obvious. You've got to do all of these things. Let's throw these cards down. And then you get to these points, you go, hang on, no, yeah. I've really got to make a big decision because these are the decisions that actually really influence the entire course of the game. Yeah. So there is the Versus Seeker. He does get back the Hex Maniac indeed. Now, he's actually opts not to get back the Executes before doing this. So he just plays the Hex Maniac. Now, I imagine, will he just, yeah, play the Stretcher, probably go for the Pseudo put that down. Millisap will have one more turn of having a full bench of eight, and then at the end of his turn, unless he plays his own Hex Maniac, he'll have to discard some stuff. Yeah, and this really does force uh, Murrow to have to always find a way of hitting this. But also, he got red carded this turn, so he has, only has a four card hand. He can't trade, so he has to have in his hand an easy, natural way into the Hex Maniac this turn. Yeah. Actually, one other really unfortunate uh, aspect from uh, Pedro's side is that uh, Miloslav is basically being gifted another KO. He's not lost a single Pokemon, he's not lost a Choice Band, so that Zorok can just do 210 again, knock out Pedro Zorok. Well, so this, actually, this is actually something that uh, Miro did last turn where he put, attached a Float Stone to the Sudabudo uh, with the Choice Band already on the Zorok. And I feel that that actually meant that if Pedro had managed to dig for the Field Blower this turn, he actually got double value. Yeah. So he's just like cutting it up. He's like, ah, I should have... Should have maybe... Does something a bit different, so he's going to actually just retreat the Sky Return. But now he no longer needs access to the Choice Band. He did the Skyward earlier on, so he doesn't have as easy access to it as he probably wanted. Yeah. So, yeah, and I, I, so I probably should have known that he did. He wouldn't just like gift uh, Miloslav uh, Zorok for free. Uh, doing doing one eight, whatever it was, it would have been like 140. Yeah, it was just kind of irrelevant numbers. Yeah. Um, so the doing the Sky Return makes a lot more makes a lot more sense. Yeah. So, actually looking at the list, the, any damage that he does at any point will actually stick for uh, Pedro. Uh, it's only Pedro playing the Acerola. Um, in fact, I think he might be one of the few players having played Acerola in Zoroark in general this weekend that yeah, we know yeah. of. Yeah, yeah you, might, you might be right. So, the 30 damage and the... Let's just have a look through my incredibly large discard pile already. Um, you know... These decks don't hang around in burning through their resources. No, they really don't. There is a rescue stretcher we mentioned earlier, so we'll be able to get some stuff back now. Imagine maybe if you're shuffling back that executor, he thinks, yep, there it is. In fact, not even shuffling it's like, it. Nope, I need that right now. Yep, so that goes into the hand and then the ex execute gets evolved. Now there's a red card again coming from Miloslav's side this time, so that's gonna cut Pedro's hand size down a fair bit. And Oh, actually, this is particularly devastating. Imagine just Hex combined with Blockade combined with Red Card. Oh, yeah. Well, especially because Pedro did just have in his hand a DCE and a Shaman that he just picked up. Yeah. So getting rid of that is just kind of adding insult to injury of like, well, you have a smaller hand, but I probably got rid of the cards you needed to be able to have the bigger hand. Yeah, absolutely. So um, Miloslav is not going to be attacking with Blockade just yet, though. He just does just announce the writer's beating to KO the Executes. And now it's going to be back on Pedro to do something. Miloslav's still not been able to fish out one of his two Zoras in the prizes. Yeah, so actually a really uh, big thing here because Mira has to discard a whole bunch of Pokemon um, and Pedro doesn't because he only has four in play. Even you know, ignoring yeah. the pseudo, he's like, it's like, wait, I don't need these. <laughs> um, no, that's a, but it seems like Miloslav had a fairly easy time choosing what to discard there. Now, Pedro kind of wants a Guzma here because he wants to be able to bring up something for a KO and or even maybe even the you know, Miloslav Sudowudo just to KO that and leave himself free to do all the bench nagons he wants to do but it's still not great no matter which way you spin it and uh, there's an ultra ball uh, for the for the third Zorak obviously just he didn't announce that they would have used uh, double propagation to make yeah. that happen but this is actually something that's made it quite difficult to follow the board at some point this weekend where players are just like I'm just going to propagation and take a cup of my deck alright yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> you're cool with that yeah uh, so he does have the field blower. He so does. That 
actually can remove the choice band off the active Zoroark, which does mean it's very unlikely Amira will have he needs choice band, hex maniac, and a full bench to be able to uh, take the KO on a Zoroark of his own. Yeah. Uh, but it does look like Petro has gone through an awful lot of his deck. Yeah, it does look like that, doesn't it? <laughs> There's not an awful lot left of that. <laughs> no. He has, he has seen the float stone, so he will be able to retreat the pseudo Rudo, which will be good for him. Uh, he can't bench any more Pokemon, so Shaman isn't an option. There is a Field Blower, though, so we will be able to discard... Just discard the float stone. Which is telling, because that suggests that he has, the way, has a way of getting the knockout this turn. Yeah, you, 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 you have to think so. If he, if he didn't, that would be... Oh, he has two passes of time in his hand, okay. And a BS Seeker as well, I believe. Yeah. So he has Hex all day, every day here. Yeah. Uh, and he'll also go, well, also... Just gonna propagation a whole bunch. Yeah. So I like, have my hand. Yeah. He's gonna make sure to do it in the right order. If he hexes now, he's gonna be a <laughs> very very sad boy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's actually thinking about this. It's like, uh, let's just, just ask some questions. Uh, it's like, yeah, I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna forget that these eggs are here yeah. and I need these. Yeah. It, it, it is kind of sad for Pedro though because he has to hex before benching the shaman, which means he doesn't get any value out of that. Well, so this is something again, I find quite funny. He was like, I only play the three eggs because I could only find three. <laughs> <laughs> so he's probably like, really should have just looked around a little more for this fourth. Yeah. Just so I could uh, always guarantee access to it. But uh, not to be. So yeah, the, all the three eggs get benched. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That won't be enough. So And the shaman. Yeah. So <laughs> like how that those three eggs have kind of merged into an omelet. <laughs> 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 They've all been mixed together. <laughs> That does, a, that does a horrifying thought. <laughs> <laughs> and down goes the Zoroark, taking two prize cards. Yeah. So now following up with the uh, going right, okay, I can just blockade. He can't hex. No, he can't. But then Pedro just KOs the executor, right? Yeah. So so yeah, he still takes a prize card, so he's quite he's more than okay with this. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's, this is wherein lies the problem. But like blockade, although it is really good, you need to time it right. And if Milosav goes for it here. I don't think it will really help him in the slightest. No, but it, it does also mean that Pedro's like, he needs to use his double puzzle next turn. Like, if he wants to be able to take the, another KO that's really important, he's going to wind up double puzzling for something. Uh, so, if it means that he has to double puzzle and doesn't have access to a supporter, it might be okay. Because he loses, he goes into four on bench, but he uh, Pedro would much rather take the KO on the Lele or the Zoroark this turn. Um, Ideally, the Zoroark to go down to even prize cards, two left, means that he's far more likely to be able to finish the game out easily. Yeah, yeah. So, a sizable chorus, once again. Uh, they've kind of drawn through masses of piles of cards, which going, well, <laughs> yep. look at all this bench we've got. Yeah, I know, right? And that's, uh, that's a chorus of nine, I believe. No. What? One. Oh no, because the excuse there's even more. I <laughs> merged together because I forgot they were the same, they were different set of Pokemon, so now it's actually 11. Yeah, it's it's always very nice because you go from a red card, right? You get red carded, you go, it's fine. I'll just chorus. Yeah. And oh, he is actually going for the blockade. Does he have the choice ban just to make it a little bit better damage wise? No, so just blockade, that's it. Um, now, yeah, Pedro doesn't have, doesn't have many cards left in deck. Um, so he does have to be somewhat careful with how he uh, finishes this game out. He has to discard yeah. one more. It's very likely he goes to the shame in here. It's just yeah. an easy two prize cards at some point for Mira. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's like right. Let's just, just make sure we're happy with all of our discards. Yeah, it draws. Now, even if Pedro does absolutely nothing in terms of playing Hex Maniac and extended here, well, his own board state. Not that you can play the Hex Maniac anyway, but if you could, then even no matter what, you still could get the KO because the exact has 100 HP. 100 damage is exactly what Riot is beating is doing right now. Yeah. So it is kind of unfortunate. It's one of those cards where if it had 10 more HP, it'd be. So much better. We see time and time again. Zorak puts you in this situation where, like, actually having an odd digit for your uh, HP makes a lot of difference. Yeah, because it turns it from a one shot into a two shot, which means that you can maybe do two turns of blockade instead of one. But right now, this uh, executor is just going yeah, to get killed. It's not long for this world. There's um, not a follow up attacker for Miloslav either. There's a, the double colors he committed onto the executor to do blockade. I don't believe I see another one in his hand. He only has one Zorak out because he hasn't been able to get his remaining two Zoras. I think Pedro has a shot here, you know. It's, yeah, it's, so it's slim, but I don't think he's. I think I still think he's not out of it. No, so Pedro is in a really nice actually, state, really, because by double puzzling, uh, he can get the uh, cards back, so he can basically guarantee that no matter what happens, he only has to deal with one Zoroark. He has probably realised that by now that Miro hasn't searched for these Zoroarks when he had the opportunity. Like he hasn't reached for them 
but at the same time, he didn't, you know, it, he hasn't had the opportunity to do so, to be honest. They've been no. so aggressive with their uh, use of eggs and uh, Very much so. searching through their deck. They haven't really had time. There's red card, so Millicent down to four cards in hand. What's Pedro going to make of that? He's a cut. Uh, the really fun thing is Pedro can't play Ranger to get out of blockade. <laughs> oh, yeah, he can't! <laughs> Funny how that works, isn't it? It's like, oh, yeah, you can just turn off the effects of your opponent's attacks. Oh, they can't, you can't play supporters anymore. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. Oh, also, if you play Ranger, then that's my supporter for this thing anyway. <laughs> There's multiple reasons why that doesn't work. <laughs> It's like it's one of the few times where it would have, you know, it's, it's an ability it could have shut off, but for no benefit. Yeah. Uh, he has said that you know he's used it maybe once or twice that the entire tournament was irrelevant. But does he regret putting it in? Uh, yes, because that was going to be the second Bridget. He's only actually playing the one copy of Bridget, so he really feels that the uh, extra Bridget could have helped him in some games. He's still in the final though, isn't he? So yeah, he's like, I know. <laughs> I always find this when people complain. It's like, oh, I'm not playing the perfect list. I'm like, but you're top four. Yeah, you're in the final. <laughs> let's let's be honest. It's fine. Yeah, it's it's just it's a sign of a good uh, good humble player attitude. Yeah. I think that's a so, trade getting rid of the Zoro arc because he hasn't got any Zoros to put it on. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, he knows what's up. He's also used his copy of uh, Rescue Structure just to get back the blockade ex ejection tool. It didn't. Um, you know, he didn't grab the Zeru back with it because he didn't have bench space for it at the time. No. But it does now mean that he hasn't got access to another one. We'll see another red card. And the fact that he's put the two eggs on the top, I'm guessing he's got an Ultra Warrior computer. Search. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I would have <laughs> thought so too. Pedro's deck is so small. To be honest, he's probably kind of glad he gets red carded most turns. Yeah, <laughs> in a weird way, almost. Uh, yeah, that's a double, double propagation. And uh, Milosav's doing some counting here, it looks like. It's like, can I get a two shot? Because unfortunately, he couldn't find the choice band for the blockade because that 40 makes a big difference again. Yeah, it does. Although, having said that, he can still two shot from here because the. Actually, no, it doesn't make a difference because if you have a full bench of four under blockade, oh, sorry, under roadblock. It, that's 100 twice and it already has 10 from the blockade so mm -hmm. actually the extra, 40, the extra 30 from the choice band doesn't matter that 10 is already put it in two shot range yeah so it's a really interesting game where every little bit of damage so far has really mattered I think the thing that Milosar is worried about is if he benches these two eggs as he looks like you think you're doing now and then Pedro has a crazy turn where he just hexes fills up his bench and KOs uh, the Zoro arc then as far as Milosar is concerned it's for a price yeah yeah it's game over basically so if that happens because then there's no Zorox left and Milosav just left attacking for Tapu Lele. Yeah, and... Uh, yeah, no, can't do that. <laughs> there's no Hex this turn. Uh, <laughs> so hang oh. on, hang on, I can fix this. Hex. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't <laughs> no, mean... He just goes for the DCE. He's already had to be effectively three, you know, it's a three shot here. So he is in that awkward situation of just like, well, there's not an awful lot more value we can get from the, yeah. uh, the current board state. Oh, he does have a Hex Amiac. Okay. Oh, there we go. But does the extra 20 damage matter? No, not really. So, the, mm, the, the reason why he might have done that is it basically means he can clear the Lele. When it goes back to his turn, he can discard the Lele. Keeps another, you know, two post options. So it means that the Zoroark, if it can survive a hit, it should be fine. Yeah. But this opens up the door a bit for Pedro because it means that he can just um, play a, a, a... I mean, he's got an Ultra Ball there. He can just play a draw supporter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, did um, did, did Milosev forget to trade? I that turn? think he might have done. Then. <laughs> um, it's one of those things when you try to track these hex maniac things. It's like, well, am I under hex? Like, you can ask. You should. And you. Your opponent has to. Your opponent has to tell you the truth. Yeah. yeah. So like, you can always go. He's like, did you play hex? And then he goes, no. He's like, oh, cool, great. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, you should always check. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that does seem a bit strange. What also seems a bit strange from the way I see it now is, so there is uh, Tapu Lele coming out from Pedro. Now, under the Hex Maniac, it's going to be difficult for him to get out the Pokemon he needs in order to get the uh, get the KO, but he can, uh, because the Hex is active, he can bench them straight away. The Roadblock ability won't be doing, it, won't be doing anything right now. Um, 
and he has a Versus Seeker, but he can't really use it for, say, uh, a Cold Rest, because if he does, he'll draw the rest of his deck and lose, <laughs> and that's not a that's, good thing to do. <laughs> yeah, that's not normally how you want to finish, uh, you have a finish game whenever final. Yeah, no. So, Versus Seeker's going to have to be for something else as well. His own Hex Maniac, it looks like. So that was actually really strong from Millisab because if Ped if he hadn't done Hex Maniac, then Pedro would have had a chance to get both the eggs out from the discard pile, get out a bit of Pokemon, Hex, and then bench all the Pokemon and uh, take a knockout. Although he's, no, he's still not got the choice band, so yeah. maybe we're not a knockout, but it would have done a lot more damage. But so he put I think he put the extra Pokemon because now he can use Apollo to take the knockout. Yeah. So because he he has no Zorua, so yeah. if this gets knocked out, he has to take with Layla, I think. Yeah. And, and then it's an offer, right? But yeah, but the the prize cards uh, mural we're we'll taking will include at least one Zorua. There's no way uh, he can't he can miss the Zorua. Um, but you could perhaps Pedro just replace the retreat cost here, to, removes the uh, damaged uh, Zorak from the active, just to go look. You need to hex me. Yeah. Otherwise you lose. But you also need to Guzma. Otherwise you probably also lose. <laughs> it's gonna be. It's going to be very, very... Not, weird is the wrong word, but it's a, it's a very hard to predict sort of game at this, at this, at this point, I feel like. I want to say that Middlesav has the advantage still, but the, just look at the two board states against each other. It just it doesn't make sense as a thing to say. So we have a whole bunch of Hexmaniacs uh, being played. Um, so, I think... Um, and there's a... Um, and it's also going to be a... It's also, Problem? No, it's also interesting that um, Pedro opted not to bench a fifth Pokemon under the Hex Maniac because then that would pretty much steal the two shot even if there's no Hex next mm. turn. Uh, he has this. I'm not entirely sure what he's considering playing. VS Seeker, okay. So he's just going to go VS Seeker for, I assume, oh, Hex. <laughs> he's not shown us, he's just kind of thrown the Verse Seeker in the discard pile and not like, done like, anything with I'll it. I'll have a think. Uh, yeah, so I think it must have been the Hex yeah. and just declared a knockout. So, I guess Pedro must have seen that coming because now he still can just bench two Pokemon and get the knockout. Yeah, so it's the thing of if you Hex and you do this, so you Hex and you don't do this, yeah. it doesn't matter. No. <laughs> um, now, Pedro has one bench. Oh, he, he has a Seismitoad. He did he top deck the Seismitoad? I think he did. <laughs> Mirror just gives this little round of applause. Yeah. It, yeah, he did. He actually drew the size, so that's insane. Um, so, he so, does have to put his entire hand down to do this. But he's got the KO. Look, look at that. Like, yeah. uh, Pedro, I think Pedro just wins now. Uh, uh, Milosaf has nothing. He has, a, he has a Tapu Lele and a bunch of eggs. <laughs> that's it. It's like, uh, okay, uh, I will give you the egg, I guess. <laughs> but, he, he can't do that, though, because then Pedro just attacks and wins. Um, Unless Milosav must have a Guzma, surely. Must. Uh, but if he has a Guzma, he nope. can... No, game two, oh. that's the end of the game one. And that's, I think, the first time we've seen it go against the coin flip. Y yeah. So that's... Pedro has won game one, going against the coin flip uh, for the Zorok matchup for the first time so far on stream. Incredible. Was a really, really interesting game. Um, Incredible win from Pedro. My yeah, goodness. Yeah, really pulling that back from... Kind of like... Uh, kind of slow start from both players, but it really kind of escalated to a board state where I think holding that pseudo early honestly was the key yeah he was, he was able to almost kind of tempt I mean let, let's be honest here the main reason why Milosav lost was pressing to Zorua you know yeah. he, he ran yeah, out of attackers absolutely. if he had more Zorox to work with then that wouldn't have happened but Pedro was still able to make use of that fact and play to his best to that knowledge yeah. and that's where the credit is due yeah and it was a really interesting game where the pseudo Budos had some impact at points but they basically hexed constantly so everyone almost ha like if they wanted a full bench they could have had the full bench yeah and we just see the game kind of finish up really quickly is that a card missing from uh, Miro's deck on the side uh, I believe that's a GX marker it's the, oh, okay. it's the Cyrus Cyrus's initiative oh, yes, GX okay, marker yes okay yes okay that's what I double check yeah. um, one of the nice things to see is that both players really played that in a really different in interesting way like we see yeah, these definitely. matchups are really back and forth they have turns where if you miss a hex or your opponent hits a hex that you hadn't played around you can really very quickly fall behind yeah yeah definitely and that was just really 
it's something else, yeah. It's like you said, the first time we've seen a, a Zorok Exmira going away where the coin flip was lost, but the the other player still, the, the player who lost the flip still won. It's mm -hmm. it's uh, really nice to see. Speaking of nice to see, can I just yeah. take a moment to call special attention to Pedro's sleeves? Those are, those are really nice sleeves. Yeah, like, I, can't, I can't see what the artwork is on them, but they're it's, really it's, nice. It's an Umbreon, an Espeon, oh, isn't it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so just, that's just an aside, but like the, 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 just, those sleeves are so nice. <laughs> yeah, so getting the prize cam set up. Yeah, so we have a good look of uh, what the prize cards are for both players. Hopefully, nothing as bad as game one for, 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 for Miroslav's side. And so, yeah, the prize cards we put out now. And I believe uh, um, we should be ready, ready to go, and not very long at all. If uh, if David over on Tech Support's uh, reaction to, uh, to the prize cards going down is to be believed, um, someone's prize cards may be that bad. Uh, um, well, they that's look familiar. Uh, 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 oh, oh dear. Um. <laughs> so oh, Miro's has managed to prize. Twos are, and also the executor, which we saw was actually really important in that first oh, game. Oh, Miroslav! Um, well, he's going to see but it now. Pedro has prized two of his oh, three execute. Yes, he has. Um, and that is going to cause him some issues as soon as he uh, kind of searches through the deck. He's like, "Oh, I'll just have some free cards." Oh, wait, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But at least now for Mi Mi uh, Miro, these are going to be some of the earlier prize cards. This yeah. Time. So actually, Miroslav just goes for a shaman. He's just uh, not, not even going to. Not going to bother waiting on that. It's just, uh, yeah, shaman straight away. Yeah, so I think for both, like, this turn he's gone right. I get to go first I, um, again, so let's try and make a board state that just can't be beaten. Uh, have one turn to kind of play all my abilities. He's yep. having to attach a double cut luster. <laughs> <laughs> did, did he search his deck thoroughly to see if the executor was prized? I, I'm not sure if he did. Uh, well, yeah, I guess he must have done some kind of some kind of thing like that, surely. But uh, he doesn't look very happy with what he's drawn. The fact that he had to go for a shaman over a attack with Lady for a Bridget as well tells me he doesn't have like any follow up. Yeah. So that's uh, that, and so that's quite unfortunate for him. And now I don't think he, equally he doesn't have a follow up here either. So mm. yeah, that, oh, that's not good news at all. Um, and actually, uh, for Pedro, he's I'm like, wait, <laughs> how bad can it possibly be? That's bad. No, a chorus for two. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, hello, Rob, Rob Kimbrum calls. He wants his play pack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is kind of a worst case scenario, yeah. basically, for, for me, though. Um, and they have uh, just two cards off the top, and it doesn't take much for Pedro to be able to just. Kind of really grab control of this game. No, no, it really won't. Uh, what what, what Miller's last two cards? Oh, oh, oh my <laughs> a, a, a near perfect rip off at the top of, from the chorus. He gets, uh, <laughs> he gets hitting the shaming off the top. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 Rob's in the chat apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, thank, thanks for tuning in and uh, love, love you too, dude. <laughs> <laughs> There's a. Uh, but yeah, wow, what a rip from Miloslav. Getting the Shaman, uh, I mean, his board state is still terrible, let's be honest. Well, but Petra might be thinking, hey, if I go for my Seismitoad this turn and find a way of retreating this uh, Zerua, we can take a knockout with Quaking Punch and no items. <laughs> that sounds like a good plan. That does sound like a good plan. It's a bit ambitious, though. I mean, he had to... He had to find Floatstone. He's only playing one, yeah. so it's really unlikely, but... Just, just watch him do it now, just because we said it's unlikely. This is basically what happens if I stream. As soon as I say, oh, it's never going to happen, it happens. Yeah. Uh, now, <laughs> uh, he has got the basket press to start with, so that's already, we're already in a better position than uh, Milosav, more than likely. Um, but he has, he takes the time now to really make sure he searches through his prize cards. Um, he's going, oh, okay. So I just got an egg. And uh, I guess my opponent will now realise I'm playing a prize two eggs because I'm only throwing away one. <laughs> Yeah. He's like, right, the Hex Maniac, that's still uh, perfectly uh, kind of at normal opening turn. If I, right, let's get one here, one in deck. Yeah, yeah just make, make sure we have access to it as soon as possible. And uh, it's got a chorus too, interestingly yeah. enough. Uh, however, his actual... Oh, yeah, his, but he has a first turn of hand! Oh, my. No. No, no way. Please don't. Oh, no, he, he doesn't play. He plays two. What? He plays two floats. Oh, okay. Well, um, he, he has both of them in hand, so actually it wasn't, wasn't that unlikely then. So if he can hit this, this would be 
quite the explosive first turn. Yes, it would. There's a Bridget as well. He now, can, if he has the DCE, he could go for the single Bridget <laughs> into the Seismitoad. <laughs> that's not what he's going for. No though. one ever does this. No, <laughs> no that's not what he's going for. He, he's, he's playing it safe. Yeah. He's, uh, well, either that or he doesn't have the double colors more than likely. But even then, it, it makes more sense to just you know, set up all the stuff you've got. Because look at, again, with this now with this setup it's almost like Pedro went first yep. because he's actually got Zoras out yep. in Milislav doesn't and, and two of the spaces of the f uh, two of the four spaces for Milislav are shape the card that you probably least want to be in that position because they're easy price cards and they just it can be super awkward for the entire point yeah, absolutely. And uh, not only that, but so Millsap just was expecting this. Uh, like he's got the DCE, right? No. Uh, but no, he doesn't. Uh, in fact, Pedro here has made a really sensible play. Uh, experienced players are very good at knowing what's likely to be on the clock. Yeah, definitely. So with only 15 minutes left. Um, oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> That's a very good point. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah thanks to the, the, the chat. It was like, uh, does it actually resist water? So it's actually relevant. Yeah. <laughs> um, so no, so no, size, the size of the play wouldn't work. Apologies. Uh, but the alignment of play is actually really nice anyway because having the access to oh, the uh, Mio's turn was retreat. Um, retreat pass, yeah. Amazing. With 15 minutes left on the clock, or just under that now, Pedro knows these games tend to go quite long he doesn't need to go super aggressive he can just kind of control the board do his normal game plan because he's one up yeah yeah he can and now what's he's got a second float zone as well so that's quite nice for him he can uh, attach that to the tap of Lele and uh, potentially and he's got double colours now so yeah he can just take an easy knockout here because um, he can he just oh no he can't no he, he would need the choice band he need a choice band or a hex hex plus something yeah um, so he's just like, Does okay, it? fine. Ooh, <laughs> 10 short. It's uh, uh, unfortunate. So um, back to... Well, <laughs> unfortunately, but not, not as much as on Middle Slav's side. Now back to him. Um, there's a hex of his own. And pass. Ooh, oh, dear. That's... God, Middle Slav has a fairly big hand as well. So that must, hand must be terrible. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's just like he's drawn a few cards. He, like He's set up for six a couple of times. And has just gone... Uh, I guess I don't play this yeah. game as much as I'd like to, to it does seem that way so and see an octo ball yeah just price is beating and just right, let's take some price cards yeah I'd, funnily enough whilst um, the uh, two eggs were in prize they just both came out yes they the did same t uh, at the same time they, so were in, they were in the right slot to do that to be fair so. yeah so it's actually quite nice uh, but, yeah, Pedro's like well any other octopus we draw into now yeah computer search let's just go yeah and um, you can see Millsab's mm -hmm. agonising over this oh he puts up the shaman and oh is that another hex no it's a red card I think he has a verse seeker in hand no no he doesn't no, no, he's even just, he's just, just like, I was like I'm going to play this yeah. like, there's no reason not to play this no I think he's just debating if there's anything else that makes sense to do. Oh, yeah, I got rescue stretcher for a shaman. Okay. Like, yeah, okay, cool. You can draw some cards. Yeah. So he can. And he's got a choice band too. So he's, so he's got, actually got stuff he can do now a bit because he can yeah, attach a choice band. So he's got skyfield to play as well. So so it's actually a bunch of usable cards, but not cards that would make sense to play because they would benefit um, yeah. Pedro more than himself. Especially because the choice band is super helpful he doesn't really want to commit it but now he no. has no choice he has to set up and have to yeah. try and draw something Although, even after all of this he's only doing a setup for two. Oh dear yeah so nothing... he's just like do I do I do, do we do it I think he has no choice I don't think he has a choice either what is that oh he's got an ultra ball okay so that's that's something <laughs> but, but he really needs to find multiple Zerua but he can only have space for one Zerua and two of them priced. Yep, that's uh, not, a good, not a good place to be. What, 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 what just happened there? Uh, Shortest hand, he has like three Zoros in his hand. Oh, oh, oh like, okay. Let's just get rid of <laughs> uh, And he does get one of the uh, Zoros and then proceeds to Chorus for a nice eight. Uh, hopefully, eight better hand cards than the ones he has previously had. Yes, uh, that's, uh, I'm sure he would love to see that. And uh, the fact he's got a draw sports now means that he can actually do maybe do something but, but there's only one Zora out and something, something else to note is that the rescue stretcher was for the shaman he's only playing the one which means that those Zoroks oh. he's discarded you have to get to puzzle for things to try and recover the resources you puzzle back the stretcher <laughs> yeah it just doesn't sound like a very nice line no um, so you get eight hand cards now that's 
a that's, fair that's, few more options than he yeah. had. And he's got the double colors to go. That's really important. So you now he's uh, he's going to be able to do sky return for 60 here. Take the shaman off the board, more importantly. So actually, this is a really, really good for him. Uh, I think if he missed this, he, out, he just outright loses. Because now, not only is he doing damage, but he's uh, taking two prizes off the board. And he's putting up a, a slot. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, really good. It's, this has now become a slot that if, we, if he can get to the other zero or has other ways of getting uh, extra more useful uh, Pokemon on board, he is able to do so. Yes. So <coughs> then one trade, two trade, and three, three trade. trade. <laughs> Starting Skyfield. Now, if he can find the double colors and the uh, DCE, the obvious choice is just go after that Zerua. But he might also be tempted to just go, well... You mean the double colors and the yeah. Guzma? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he already has the double colors in hand. Yeah. So that's one out of two. Uh, and he's attached it. Um, and if he can just keep the the options off the board, then how do you... you know, if, you, if you're maxed out at doing 60 damage per turn, it becomes an awful lot more difficult to win the game. Yeah, it does. He's, he's got only Sorolla in hand, which he could play. But whether it's not as a good idea is another matter. But it might be. If he's not got a better supporter to play, then I guess why not, right? Just take the damage off. Um, it doesn't look like he has a better supporter to play either. Cause so he may opt to not play it because... It's more likely that uh, Milo could KO the Zerua. Oh, um, uh, yeah. So no, he may want to conserve, conserve it just so he can keep access to multiple trades at, yeah. uh, every time. Yeah. He, he risks a versus secret from his privates as well. That's a really, that's a really good uh, find for next turn from Petro. He'll be able to. Um, assuming if Milo Sav is unable to find a Zoroark, then next turn he could retreat and then Guzma bring up Zora, Zora and. Uh, cement his lead even further which is already a, a, an astonishing one yeah it is again this is another one where he didn't go first no he didn't but he, he practically did because on his first turn Melislav did not bench a single Zora yeah the having access to all the cards you need at the same time is difficult when um, you know you can't get the Zoras to get the Zoroaks so with two Zoro prized um, what are the puzzles on Rise as well? Bridget. So, uh, is Milo only playing the one Bridget as well? Or is he playing two? He's playing two. Okay, so he did have access to it early then. He could have gone into the Lele for the Bridget, but opted to go for the Shaman instead. Yeah. Uh, which is normally the right line, but sometimes when you check your prize cards, you might go, okay, right. The odds of me drawing into these are always super low. Maybe I'll just guarantee something. Yeah, maybe. So, Battle Compressor gets rid of some more eggs and the uh, remaining Bridget, because Pseudo's are in play, it's a bit late. <laughs> There's a double colourless. Well, the Paralyzing Gaze. Is this actually going to be the first time we see it used today? Is it going to happen? No, this weekend even. I think it must be, yeah, because I don't, I don't see a Zorak in his hand. Yeah, there, there, there it is, the card's kind of left, just in case you can't forget what it does. This is the highly in-demand uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Zora version from Dark Explorers. Okay, so, VSC takes the chorus. Maybe it's a Zoro arc, so you might not have to paralyze in case. <laughs> you probably hope not to. Yeah. <laughs> with, any, with any luck from his side. So, so it's only a chorus of six, though. It's like, it's like you may as well be playing a Cynthia. Yeah. Though. One of those funny things. <coughs> There it is. And what does he get? Oh, I think he may have. He doesn't have the Zorak in hand at the very least, because otherwise he'd have thrown it down. Yeah. Does he have an Ultra Ball though? Oh, it looks he, like it. Yeah. It's very telling. He's got double colorless too, so that's that's pretty good. Yeah, there's the Ultra Ball. Finds the Zorak. <laughs> Patriot's just like, let's keep this tidy. Yeah, yeah. Just make sure we actually see what's going on. And so now, oh, he's got the other Zoro as well. That's pretty that's, good. That's very, that's very good off of that uh, chorus. And considering it's for only for six cards, to be able to hit Ultra something ball. to let him establish a board of some description. Yeah, no, 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 that's about as, as, as good as he could have asked for, to be honest. So there's the other Zoro. Uh, there's uh, is there an execute coming coming up? He's, he's done double propagation again. Put one of them down. Yeah, because now he's hitting to the 100, it makes it far easier to take the two hit knockout if he mm. wants to. It's just interesting that he preemptively did the um, second propagation, though, maybe fearing a hex from Pedro's side. I think so, because for Pedro to be able to respond here, he already has the choice band on one of the Zoroaks, um, so he only needs to see the DCE and a full bench. So he might be in a position to go, well, actually, I need to not risk 
uh, him just playing Hex. I want to mm. make sure I have a way of putting extra cards down next to it. Yeah, and uh, he's done three trades now. Oh, I don't think he... I don't think he saw the extra double colorless energy. Oh, no, oh, no he's got it in his hand. So, he's just going to go, right, I'm just going to... He's going to go Ultra Ball here real quick, like. Just, you know, just, I haven't got enough cards in my hand. I'm, I need more. No, <laughs> and there's a, oh, an Execute coming down. Oh, hold on. We know he has the Versity in his hand already. He might be just grabbing enough Pokemon to actually get the knockout. So, mm -hmm. because if he has the double colors in his hand already, from and I think I saw the the edge of one. Uh, with before. the VS Seekers. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's so, the yeah, there. There. so he's, he's, he's got it all. Yeah, he managed to hit everything. He's like, oh, cool, right. So you you found a Zoroark. Great, but it doesn't last very long. No, so never mind. Yeah, never mind. It's just gonna it's, that's gonna be knocked out in one hit, and uh, it's gonna be sad news. Yeah, there it is. Versus Seeker. Now he's got to be careful which way he does this. You know, don't play it yet. You know, I'm sure he won't because uh, he's obviously very, very good. And uh, he's going to get do the propagations first. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, actually, the big thing about him only having three execute is he can never do four. No. So after he's been pseudo-hudoed, he can't pick up all four hex, put four down. Yeah. He always has to have another. Yeah, he, he does. And yet, it seems like this weekend it won't have actually mattered. Yeah, it turns out three's fine. Three's fine. fine. Wrong Zora is fine. You yeah. know, it's like wrong Zora. They're like not, not Zora you'd think. Like, it's, it's all fine apparently. I think he has a Lele in hand. He, he has another Zora in hand as well. Oh, okay, so he definitely plays the Zora. Um... And yeah, three eggs again. <laughs> again, the omelets <laughs> of executes. Um... Yes, yes, Pedro, that is enough. Just make sure you retreat to the right one. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, yep, we do need the choice band this time. Yeah. And once again, one hit knockout, right beating onto Milosav's fresh Zora. Uh, it's just one prize card separating him from, from winning. Winning, and six separating Milosav from winning. <laughs> one game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, with only a few minutes left on the clock as well. Yeah. It's like, Pedro's board is very strong right now. What, what actually does Milosav do here? Like, so, having promoted the suit of Wudo, that says I haven't got the Zero Arc. Yeah. So I have no way of taking yeah. the KO. The, okay, I figured out a way for Milosav to win. If uh, if Pedro plays like plays two supporters in one turn <laughs> and shuffles his hand into his deck, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the only way. He's got, he's got, to, he's got to do a Jake Wolven. <laughs> he's got to, you know, dual brains magnus. Yeah. The, the winner one line yeah. he's been hiding all weekend <laughs> comes out, um, and <laughs> it just. Looking at the, the hand going, um, so I don't really have many options. Because uh, even if even if uh, Pedro doesn't find the Hexmaniac next turn, with the pseudo inactive, if that stays there, it still goes down for the single prize. Yeah. Like, Pedro really doesn't need much, and Miroslav needs an awful lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's. Uh is it an awful lot, I think, more than is actually possible yeah, from given I think everything. So. Yeah. I think so. Oh, dear. And right now we're just kind of waiting for that. There's the handshake, yeah. Milos yeah. acknowledges. And Pedro will be your 2018 Stuttgart Regional Champion. I, I think well deserved. Probably not what the deck he was expecting. Um, to, you know, and like the exact build of this deck that we were looking uh, at, the, you know, doing well this weekend. You know, a few cards different, a few counts different because just out of necessity. Yeah, yeah. But to go all that way to, you know, and been able to push through so many games basically winning two games against the coin flip the incredible semi-final against Tord that was streamed as well he's played some excellent games this weekend and I think a deserved winner yeah yeah no, no, absolutely and uh, a, a truly accomplished player already as we already know you know having won the Ocean International Championships already a uh, top eighted at uh, the European International Championships uh, previously just it's really great to sort of see him actually winning a really big event here again and uh, just a lovely guy as well yeah he's a super nice guy yeah. um, and hopefully uh, well I guess we'll have him on for an, his third interview of the weekend. Yes, yes. He's the winner, right? Yeah, I guess we will. So, so we'll be back very shortly. Yeah, guys, don't go away. Our first base is...